Hey you guys, today I want to talk to you about your feelings and how to deal with uncomfortable feelings. The two things that really take people out in life are their thoughts and their feelings. I'm going to make a separate video on trauma and how, where that comes from, but for right now I just want to teach you some things to help you with your feelings because the thing that got me interested in coaching and all the stuff is me struggling with my own feelings. Especially the three years before my divorce were extremely painful for me. Many periods of great pain and the two years after my divorce. And I had to learn to look within because here I was living alone and I had no one to blame but myself. And that's the great gift of living alone as an empty nester. It's like anything in my life that is taking away from my joy, I can't blame anyone else. It's all me because it's everything I'm creating. And I heard something that Carl Jung had said that if you want to see who you are on the inside, I'm paraphrasing, look at your life and that's a material, it's a manifestation of what you're thinking on the inside. I'm like, I'm not quite happy with the way things are going. And I was especially very heartbroken. I had a lot of pain in my heart and I had loneliness. My mother and my mother, I'm very, I'm fortunate that I have a beautiful mother. Um, she has trouble with her emotions. She's not perfect, you know, so I had trouble with my emotions. But she really loved me and she gave me some good insight right as I was going through my divorce about feeling the feeling in my body. So I usually don't like to listen to what she says. <laughs> <laughs> like that rebellious child, but I was so desperate. I decided to try it. And that one time, and I was standing in my bathroom over my sink. I still remember it. And I'm like, where do I feel this pain in my heart, this grief, this total grief and lack of love? I was, you know, grief, heartbreak. And somehow I had imagined it felt like this tightness in my chest and I knew that I had to feel it and mentally go inside of it and feel it instead of being in my thoughts about why my heart was breaking, why I was so sad, how I could change it, you know, controlling, um, trying to be okay with, trying to distract myself, trying to understand it, trying to figure it out it was all mental activity. Some people, to get away from their uncomfortable feelings, turn to addictions, like being overly busy, alcohol, porn, shopping, gambling, food, whatever it is. But I was just in my head trying to figure out how to be okay with the things that were upsetting me. And it wasn't working. And I would cry sometimes, and I would just cry and cry and cry over some guy that blew me off. And I didn't know how to stop. And I thought, at least I'm feeling something. But I was stuck in it. It wasn't moving. And I, I was tired of feeling that way because my whole life I had been happy. Um, except for these brief intervals when some guy blew me off. I think my early teens, I had that same feeling. In the last few years of my marriage, I had that same feeling. So, and I remember... I read the, before I got divorced, I was asking two different therapists what to do about it. And one of them said didn't, didn't know, and the other one said take Xanax, which I tried, and that didn't help. I tried that once, that didn't help. So I got very interested in how to cure this loneliness and this grief, because I'm like, I'm not going to take medication for that. Besides, it doesn't even help. Um, so there I was, standing over my bathroom sink, and being like, okay, I have to go inside this. My heart, it felt like a black hole in there, to be honest. I'm embarrassed to say that. It felt like there was some kind of void. And that was just maybe, I don't know if it was really there. Or it was just a mental construct, you know, being told that we were all sinners. And I could only love myself if I'm perfect. And I hadn't started my self-love journey yet. And... um I was so focused on my life would be better if God would just give me a relationship or this guy would just like not blow me off. And thank God for living by myself and God forcing me to, to go within. So I was terrified, you guys. I was terrified. So I'm standing over my sink and I'm like, and I really thought 
that if I felt that feeling in my heart, I could die. I think a lot of people don't want to look at their stuff because they feel like they're going to die. And I was like, you know what? I'm so freaking tired of being afraid of myself. If, if going within me makes me die, so be it, because I don't want to live afraid of myself and afraid of my heart. So let me just dive right in there. And it took a couple minutes. I think that was for the loneliness, actually. But the first one was the heart one. So I went inside there and I felt it, and it relieved the grief, and it was just gone. And then I did it. I used to be very lonely. This is the one that was the void. This is, well, the hard one was super scary. I don't remember the details as much, but I was afraid to go in there and it wasn't a black hole and I was surprised. It actually lifted my heartache. It lifted my heartache. It just dissolved. So I got very interested in that and I started practicing that technique with my friends and I didn't come up with a technique. It's called somatic release because feelings are in the body. Thoughts are in the head, feelings are in the body. So I started practicing it with my friends and they felt instant relief. And then I started practicing it with looking for coaching clients on my Facebook and my YouTube. This is like my eighth YouTube channel. I once had some videos that went viral. I had a lot more followers, but I kept do violating the guidelines, but I had started practicing with people and they all felt relief. And they felt this great joy and peace when they finished this going within. And the, the practice would take a few minutes to even a half hour. And people would get lost in this inner world inside themselves, going inside their feelings. And they would come out so feeling totally peaceful. It's kind of like you have a tight knot in your back. And you can take Tylenol or you can ignore it. But if you rub it out by just giving it attention it'll release and that's the same with the feelings that are stuck. The one I really remember that was a sudden shift. I used to feel very lonely and this video is inspired by a subscriber who calls himself Dave who asked if I ever get lonely and I thought I need to make a video on this because I know a lot of people feel lonely and I once felt very lonely and I can help you. This is what you do. So that one I really remember because that loneliness was very, very deep. Loneliness for having a family around, having people around, you know, living alone. That was hard. That was hard for me to live alone. I'm not a loner. Well, now I probably, probably am. So I'm standing over my sink and I'm, where's that loneliness? And it was in my belly, right here in my belly is where I felt it. And it felt like this big hole. And I had done enough of this. I had done it in my heart before and other feelings. So I'm like, okay, I know what to do. But it was scary. It felt like this big void in my belly. And I'm just mentally just jumped right into the hole. I just jumped right in. That one was so fast. It was like three seconds. And it was just gone. The void was just gone. And you know what? I have not been lonely once since then. Not one time, not one time. And that was like four or five years ago. And before that, I was lonely constantly. So there's a difference between being alone and feeling lonely. So I'm still alone, but I'm not lonely. So that is a great, great key um, for the feelings. And now... And I used to cry a lot and not know how to stop. Now when I cry, um, some of it too, I realized I was shifting into like poor me victim mode. But then I started being like, okay, I cry. It's a feeling and it moves through me. And it just will last like 10 or 15 seconds. So this somatic healing has helped me so much. Now, there are certain things that I have to also do to avoid one th feeling I struggled with a lot was feeling like irritable when I went to sleep or feeling really hot when I went to sleep. And I started being with that uncomfortable feeling, but it was hard. So I had to stop eating spicy foods because that made me irritable and harder to sleep at night. But here's a key. All of us need to check in on how comfortable we are with just being ourselves and being alone with ourselves. 
So everyone ought to be able to just sit still for two or three minutes. Just try it, just try it even for a minute. Just put your phone away, put everything away, and just sit still. And notice what discomfort comes up for you. And then be willing. I think a lot of the reason this somatic thing works is because you're diving into it and you're allowing it to be there. You're not fighting it anymore. Allow it to be there. Allow it to spread out. Go into it. And any kind of negative thoughts you have about hating your ex, be willing to let that go. You don't have to forgive them, but just be willing to let go of the, un the anger or whatever. And these are all very transforming things. Going into it, being willing to let go of the feeling. You don't have to forgive, you don't have to forgive those people who are pieces of shit to you. However, you can let go of the feeling, and that doesn't mean that you're gonna be friends with them. Because once you let go of all of the stuff, you actually don't have to resist anything, and you still have really good boundaries, but you won't get triggered by them anymore. Okay, that's called somatic healing, and you can, it's a practice that Eckhart Tolle talks about, shamanic healers talk about, and John Wellwood. Let me get the book. John Wellwood, this is a really great book, Perfect Love, Imperfect Relationships, and how we have a tendency to want to make someone the enemy. You know, a really good way to practice this is to have friends who have very opposite political or public policy health beliefs and to just see them as people separate from their thoughts and be friends with them. Like, we don't have to make everyone our enemy. Um, now, there's also a book called The Presence Process, which I did, and it requires for 10 minutes twice a day sitting still and breathing and while you're breathing in and out you say I am here now in this it keeps you focused on your breath it's a presence practice or like to do a meditation but the thing is I'm addicted to thinking we're all addicted to thinking and the reason that you know I realized my sleep has gotten a lot better now but I realized what the thing was I didn't want to stop thinking so I would watch videos and I would just go to sleep when I was super tired. So a good check-in on your ability to be present with yourself is when I go to bed, can I fall asleep easily? Or do I have to keep thinking? What are the things that keep you from sleeping? What addictions are you turning to to distract yourself from being with yourself? And that gets back to me not wanting to date some guy. Like, why would I want to date some guy who doesn't even like himself? Who has to distract himself by doing all the stuff? Because not that many people are doing what I'm teaching here. Being able to be present with themselves. Can you take your partner and just sit next to them on the sofa and say nothing? And just enjoy sitting next to them because you like their energy. That's why I kind of like did that one date. I was just, I just want to do a beach walk with you. I want to see if I just like your energy when we're not spending money or going to dinner or doing anything fancy. Okay, so that has to do with being present with your feelings. Now, as far as your thoughts taking you out, um, so I told you it was the presence process, John Wellwood, Eckhart Tolle, somatic experiencing and then for the thoughts I really like Eckhart Tolle for helping you with your thoughts but he also talks about the pain body so Eckhart Tolle is really good at helping people realize to stop thinking like when you're in nature you know instead of labeling the tree just feel the tree be in awe just experience things that's called being present um what I also wanted to um let you guys share with you guys on this video is a gentleman I've talked about many times healthy gamer I'm going to link his video any of you who are struggling with anxiety or going to sleep he is very very good he's like what are you trying to distract yourself from what's really going on and it's okay to feel all your feelings one reason I make my videos like this is because I'm so tired of being told you know, we always have to smile. If I see someone like on a dating app who's always smiling, I'm very suspicious. Like, 
aren't you comfortable just being yourself? Because people don't always smile. It's okay to cry. And when someone has a feeling, let them have their feeling. Like, just be present for it. You don't have to tell them they can't cry or be upset. Like, let people have their feelings and let people just be. Like, we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be perfect to be okay. We don't have to have smile to be okay. We don't have to have a perfect background and all the makeup on to be okay. And um, uh, you're allowed to have different feelings. And a lot of us didn't learn that because as kids, you know, pe other people's feelings are hard to deal with if you can't deal with your own. And I think dealing with feelings is like a new practice in human society because <laughs> so few people can do it. They're constantly distracting themselves from their own feelings. So, um, so check out um, Healthy Gamer and these resources I've given you because if there's no reason to be afraid of our feelings. That's why I want to give you some tools. You don't have to be afraid of your feelings. And there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. There's a difference between being rejected. You're not abandoned. Like an adult can't be abandoned. They can be rejected. An adult can't really be lonely unless they're like in a prison cell. But even then, yeah, you're isolated versus lonely versus alone. And... Um, like the healthy gamer was talking about today that what are you avoiding in your life because you're afraid of a feeling what are the things you're not willing to do because you you're you're afraid of the feeling that you can't handle the feeling and that's what a lot of guys are afraid of rejection because they can't handle the feeling you can't learn to handle the feeling it's not about you you just let it move through you you just have to learn to let it move through you um, so I think being a master of our feelings um, learning how to deal with our feelings is so important because it can take people out because they feel freaking powerless. They're so strong, these feelings, and you don't, all you got to do is question your thoughts because your negative thoughts will create feelings. So you question your thoughts. Is this really true? And then let them uh, feel them in your body. And there are a lot of guys in the manosphere that are very toxic. There's this guy, Adam Grant, that keeps popping up on my YouTube channel. They're making videos about him. He's this very narcissistic, sociopathic woman abuser, trafficker, con artist. And he's followed by so many men. Even Entrepreneur in Cars had him on, Fresh and Fit. And they're giving him a platform. And this guy's pure evil. And he's got... He's making millions of dollars a month off of guys signing up for his course on how to be an alpha male. I can just hear from the guys one sentence he says, I'm like, this guy is a con artist. But a lot of guys follow him and are spending their money. And he also has some kind of sex trafficking ring business. So he moved to Romania because the laws are looser. But even now the FBI is investigating him. And guys are watching that instead they should be watching a guy like healthy gamer you know it's not about becoming some super guy that can con people it's about developing a healthy mental state that's where people really need to focus like a good mental outlook and the healthy gamer guy is really good because he understands addictions he understands men he's a psychiatrist and he's very uh easy like he's He's very easy for young people to relate to, and even for me. I really like him and the videos he makes, so I'm going to keep, uh, you know, mentioning him. Those are the good videos to listen to. People who actually are helping you with your mental state without trying to get your money. Like, this healthy gamer has so much free advice. I even bought his course just to see what I could learn from it. It was only $50. And it's very caring. He starts out, he, he spent a lot of time doing the interviews and he shows his bleepers. And in the beginning, he wants to know your mental state. Like he really cares about people. He's not just trying to get a buck out of you. And his advice is really good about questioning your feelings, not being afraid of your feelings, how to deal with your anxiety. He has all these tips on how to deal with your anxiety and how to deal with your depression and your mindset. And, you know, the difference between distracting yourself and using meditation and all of the stuff. 
And he says, you know, people can take drugs for their anxiety, but it doesn't cure anything. It's still there. So why is it there? What's going on for you? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Like, he's just good. I think that, um, I think, uh, I think this is really good. Me as a woman, I like to feel. So I really love this book. It's very feely, feely. And he has examples in here of how people go into their body and do their somatic healing. So you can definitely, I really recommend this book for uh, uh, dealing with your feelings. Uh, my feelings don't scare me anymore. The thing I'm personally working on now is like how to not get triggered. And that for me that had to do with um, stepping into owning my boundaries. And boundaries are not walls. They're just requirements to be with me. If you want to be with me, these are my requirements. I've also been working on um, being kind and not being entitled and going off on people. I've also been working on like... Um, what are the patterns that I have and how I relate to people where I'm modeling my parents and didn't even know it. But those will be videos for another day about trauma and our different responses. But just for now, I just want to tell you guys that you don't have to be perfect. I'm not. Look at my apartment is a mess. I'm in the middle of cleaning and your feelings are all healthy. You need your feelings. Don't be afraid of your feelings. Whatever you, whenever you feel an uncomfortable feeling, go into your body and don't fight your feeling and don't judge it and just be like, oh, I'm having this tightness in my chest. Okay, so let me just allow it to be there. I don't have to push it away anymore. In a coaching call, I go through it a lot slower. I should probably model it better. Like, you don't have to push it away. It's okay that it's there. Just let it be there. Just let it spread out. What's it feel like? What's it look like? Go inside of it. They go inside of it and then it starts to shift. It changes shape. It changes form. Okay, just kind of walk around it. Kind of look at it. You know, touch it if you want to. Then I wait till they're comfortable. And then I'll be like, okay, now jump into that darkness. Just jump in. Then they jump in and then they're like, oh my God, I'm swimming, I'm floating. It's melting away, it's all light, you know? It's kind of how it goes. And then they open their eyes and go like, wow, what just happened? <laughs> it's better than any drug. And it releases it permanently. But if you're, if with anxiety it's harder though because anxiety is mostly mental and your anxiety won't go away because you heal it in your body. That's mostly mental, but it works for um, loneliness, jealousy. When you feel angry, you can use it. Um, grief, it's really good for heartache and grief, especially. Um, yeah, and then also any kind of practices where you're not thinking are good. Being out in nature, letting your mind wander. Don't wear the headphones. Just let your mind wander. Um, just sitting still with nothing to do. I sometimes just like to sit on my sofa and look at the trees. And I like to see the leaves just moving. And I just feel so peaceful. Just allow yourself to be out in nature wherever you feel peaceful. Um, and just let your mind wander and just experience things, you know. Just... Be aware of not thinking. That's where a lot of um, peace will come. I hope this video has been helpful to you guys because I try to help people not be in our self-induced pain. Self-induced pain That's what it was. Me just being stuck in my feelings when there are all these resources out there teaching me I don't have to be. And thank you for watching my video. Check out the link below for Healthy Gamer. He's very, very good.